All right, we have Cassie Riddick joining us from Michigan this morning. Cassie, a good morning to you. How are you feeling? I am feeling just so excited, humbled, honored, and just so overwhelmed with excitement to be here. It's been an awesome experience. And it's been a long one, too. I mean, you've been there for quite some time now, the competition starting on Monday. So kind of talk to us, what have these few days look like for you? Oh my goodness. So we have a packed schedule. We have been going and doing all kinds of activities. So Monday, we actually went to this, um, I think it's the Meiji Gardens. It's a beautiful like art sculpture and like, you know, a Japanese garden type place. So me and my wheel sisters, that's what we call all the contestants here, the other title holders. We've really just made bonds. So we did that on Monday. And then on Tuesday, we had um, this theme called the Fairy Garden Night. And we all dressed up like fairy um you know different characters I went as a violet butterfly that's what I chose you know in honor of my daughter Violet and Violet's victory there was some really beautiful costumes there and then Wednesday we had under the sea night and so I actually went a little creative out of the box I got um, a necklace the heart of the ocean from Titanic and I actually went as Rose from Titanic like under the sea when she drops the necklace in the ocean so that was that night that was so fun and then last night we actually went to uh, dancing with the decades and the hotel here has a really like fun 20s theme so I went as a flapper and uh, we just danced the night away it was a lot of fun and it sounds like it too by the way I loved your theme I know we were talking about that earlier like what were you going to be and how are you going to dress it up and it sounds like you just totally nailed it so <laughs> talk about, like, how is this competition different from other competitions we've seen in other pageants and whatnot so this competition you know it's focused on advocacy and our platform so I came here with my platform one parent one power but when I leave here I'm leaving here with 18 other platforms um, from all the different women from dif disability housing to equity to just different um, different platforms and you know just meeting the other women in wheelchairs and getting to know other people with disabilities we are a strong community and you know it's great to have the accessibility to dance with them and and talk with them and just relate to people on that level, um, really relate to everyone. So that has been just so amazing. And what's been a moment from all of this so far that you've just felt like this is what you're going to cherish from forever? So there was a day when we we all had to do a uh, a board, a trifold board from our state. And my state, obviously, is Arkansas. Yay, go pigs. Woo, woo pig suey. But anyway, um, I actually brought, if I'll show you, I had a larger picture of this, but I had Violet's picture on one part of my board. And I had all of the other contestants, all the other wheel sisters in there. And I got to tell my story about Violet. And I actually brought her medallion from Aurora, from her heart transplant. And the ladies were crying. I was crying. We all just shared that experience. And that was the first time I think I broke down um, that much. But you know what? It was so wonderful because they all were there to support me and we all lift each other up. And so I thought that was really beautiful. Oh, what a beautiful experience. And speaking of Violet, you have a beautiful butterfly pin on you. Talk us about the significance of that and the story behind it. So this pen here, I carry with me. I keep it on all my outfits when I go out because I promised myself I'm taking a piece of her everywhere that I go. And it just gives me confidence and makes me remember why I started my platform. It's for my daughters, Natalie and Violet. And, you know, it really is a victory that I'm getting to talk about her story on a national level. So like I said, this pen goes everywhere with me. And when I do go to judging and speech night and crowning, she's going to be here with me. And it just gives me motivation. Of course she will be. And we're all rooting for you. Speaking of, you are about to head into judging and, and kind of like the end of all of this. So talk to us what's next and how are you feeling? Okay, so yes, I have my final judging interview here in a few minutes. So I, um, I'm i a little bit nervous, but you know what? I am more just excited to tell them a little bit more about my story and my platform. I feel like my platform is so powerful. It's on a national level, regardless if you're a single parent, if you're an adoptive parent, if you want to have children as you know a disabled individual, this platform could change lives. And so I really want the judges to see and to feel that. Um, and then tonight we have a speech night and then tomorrow is the crowning gala. So I'm really just preparing for that. And I'm going to be out there in some Arkansas state colors representing. So it'll be exciting.
Well, Cassie, we are so proud of you. And I can even tell you from the viewers who have watched your story, you've inspired so many people just here in our little corner alone. I can't imagine what you're doing on this national platform. And I can't wait to hear all about it when you come back. Talk to us about your advocacy platform a bit more and just the background to it and how it's helping disabled parents. Yes. So my platform has a slogan. It's called One Parent, One Power. So one parent has a dual meaning. So obviously we're all one parent as in unity, but one parent is also in single parent. And then one power as I want to empower these parents, these disabled parents, and also a nod to the power chair for wheelchair. So I thought that was a fun slogan. But what it really represents, it's about educating and advocating for disability parental rights and civil rights. And I don't know how many people know this, but there's actually nine states where disability mobility is the only factor in determining a parent unfit, and you can actually get your child removed and placed in foster care. And this all happened from a very archaic law. Um, it's actually, you know, and even the ADA, there's it's very blurred under the ADA. So we really need to overturn some of these obsolete laws and get this passed because you know what? Yes, I'm in a wheelchair, but that does not mean that I am not independent enough to take care of my daughter. And I know there's adoptive parents out there that have struggled with this archaic law. I know that I have. And, you know, I hate to say this, but there's 35 states, which is 70% of the country, that means um, that disability is one of the sole factors in, you know, getting your child removed. And what that means is one in every 10 children are at risk if you have a disability, regardless if that's intellectual, mental, physical, and it needs to get overturned. It needs to be changed. So I'm out there advocating. And then the other part of my platform has to do with creating a network of support for these parents to live independently. So um, partnering with like the Arkansas State Independent Living Council, RSILC, also uh, partnering with like Single Parent Scholarship of NWA, who supported me, getting them education, getting them out there um, and helping, getting people to help them, you know, whether it be caregivers or whoever, to just keep these families unified and intact. It's so important. And I feel like, you know, this is 2023. These laws need to be overturned. They need to be changed. And it's just one of those situations where if nobody speaks up about it, then it's not going to get changed. So that's why I'm here. And that's what I'm advocating for. And you're speaking up about it. <laughs> Kathy, again, I've said this before and I'll say it again. It's just been an honor to watch you along this journey. I can't wait to see how it all unfolds. You're a winner in our eyes and especially the attention that you're bringing to these issues. I mean, that alone is just incredible. So thank you for taking the time out of your morning. I know it's been incredibly busy. Know that all of Arkansas is behind you. We are rooting for you and we want to see you come back with a crown, but either which way, you're just a winner in our heart. Oh, thank you so much, Crystal. Thank you to everyone back in Arkansas that supported me and going forward. And you know what? what regardless of what happens, we're going to turn this tragedy into triumph. One parent, one power all the way. Let's be unified. Kathy, thank you so much. Thank you.